Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode of the vlog. So in today's episode, we are going to attempt to fit the exhaust on the uh, GTE, and then that should help it to be ready to next week, which is when we go and get the car remapped. So we're gonna get on with that straight away. We're not gonna waste any time today. Let's see how we get on with that. Right, so first job we're gonna do is cut our pipe. So here's our pipe, here's our 90 degree bend. Um, what we are going to do, we're going to cut it along here so we get a straight cut. I'll show you the reason why we need to do that in a second when we go underneath the car, you'll see what I mean. But under the car, so this is a 45 degree angle which is fine for a Golf GTE, sorry GTD, but not the GTE that we've got. Under GTE it goes like that. So what we're going to do is, we, as it, under GTE as it comes around here, we're going to cut it across and then we'll do the same here and then this hopefully will fit up. But we're first of all, we're going to um, take a look to see if we can measure up and make sure it all fits before we commit the cut. And here is our reducer pipe. So this is the pipe that we're going to fit. So once we cut that in there, we'll fit this on. And then where it comes to the piece where it reduces, we'll just cut it across again and then we'll clamp it down. Put some sealant in there as well to make it gas tight and we should be fine. And then this end here on the... Uh, exhaust under the car we will fit it inside and then clamp it from the top like that okay so it'll fit inside and then where it stops we'll whack it in to make sure it's a nice tight gas fill and of course we'll put some gasket and um, some sealant in there as well clamp it down that should be enough now the thought is that because this isn't going to be going anywhere under the car it's not going to go in forward it should keep it in place as long as we get our cut right and that's the main thing that makes this so risky let's take a look under the car before we start cutting here welcome to below the golf gte so this is the back box that we're going to remove okay and then this is the pipe that i was talking about so here on our exhaust we got an angle but here as you can see you've got a 90 degree bend it goes around the um, rear uh, the rear subframe which is this here and then straight through the middle of the car so if we cut it along here then that should allow us to just slip our pipe straight in and then we'll use the hangers at each end That's these things here to secure it in place okay should be easy but I bet you it's not so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bolt off just here so that we can get this to hang down and actually you know the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna do some measuring up to see how things line up so let's get our exhaust underneath here and then let's do some measuring up Right, so that's a pipe cut. Now before I commit to cutting the pipe under the car, I wanna make sure that this is gonna work by clamping this down. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this edge off here. So this is the upper edge. And I'm gonna make a slit into here and then the other side. And then we're gonna use this to clamp down. I wanna see if we get a good seal. If we're not, providing we get a good seal, then I'm happy to commit and get under the car and cut the exhaust off. Whew, okay, let's do this.
Okay, so that is now on securely. And that is on tighter than a tight thing. Now the benefit, the beauty of this piece here is that when I cut the pipe on the other side, I've got more to play with. I will cut that back because what we don't want to do is have this pipe like that sticking in there and, and that will be a restriction. So we'll take it back to where it needs to go. But this here, what I did, I cut four slots on here. And then as you can see inside there, let's put a torch down there so you can see. It is nice and sealed, and there's no light coming in there, having there. I did actually get the old welder out and just welded some of the sides there, and um, that seems to have done the trick. So, yeah, that's done. Right, so now it's a big commitment, because once I cut the pipe on the car, there is no going back. We are committed to taking this and fitting this I've been having my doubts, but you know what? <laughs> That's what this is all about. It's having a go. So let's go and have a go. First thing we need to do is lower the hangers on the um, exhaust on, on the car. So let's go and do that. So you're looking at the exhaust back on the desk and not on the car. Why? Well, I've changed my mind. Do you know what? I don't know how loud this is going to be or how loud this is going to make the car. And this GTE, I don't want it to be obnoxiously sounding um, and straight through exhausts on those vehicles. It will make it louder and that's not what I really wanted. So for now, I've decided not to put this on the car. I am going to uh, consider it after I get the remap next week, but this can stay where it is for now, okay? We will revisit this later, should the moment take me. But anyway, we've got something a little bit more serious to sort out now. My son, uh, who drives the Coria, the Ford Coria van that we fixed up last year, uh, it's failed its MOT. Now, some of the things it's failed on are really simple. One thing is a little bit concerning and that's emissions. So we're gonna try and sort that out. We'll get through all the little bits and pieces and then get it retested because he needs it for work. So that's the thing that's gonna take priority at the moment. So let's get that sorted. Right, okay, so here is the MOT failure sheet that we've got. So let's see what we got. We got windscreen wiper does not clear the windscreen effectively from the outside. Passenger seat backrest cannot be secure in an upright position. Tire has a cut in access of the requirements deep enough to reach the ply and exhaust emissions. Right, let's get these things sorted. Right, so the first thing that we've done already, we have fitted a new tire. This tire is uh, not new, it's a um, part worn. And uh, the problem with the original tire was it had a cut on the inside that went from here right through. It's quite a deep cut, so it did need to be replaced. Now, there is a spare underneath here, but the whole point of a spare is that you need it for when the car is, uh, when you have a puncher. Right, the next thing we need to sort out is the um, passenger backrest cannot be secure in the upright position near side front right so i've seen that what it is it won't lock into position like that it's loose and it should lock and what i figured out the problem was is this here so essentially this is a latch and it's it's coming up here but it won't go any further so i think it's stuck and it's not allowing the cable there's a cable there's a cable that allows you to um, put through. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take this off. Uh, this side here still seems to work. We'll take that off. That's the cable on this side there. So we'll take the side off and then we should be able to feed that through. I'll do that off camera because I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time. And we'll come back. Right, that was easy. So basically taking that off, this is wrapped around a pipe, a little plastic grommet, and it wasn't allowing the whole thing to come through. So now it's right through, and now 
it locks right into place and it's firm as anything so that's great there you go great little seat this really comfortable but you can put it right down flat like so I'll show you so when you bring that down that will unlutch that seat push that down and then you got a nice little base so it's a nice little touch that I like that anyway that's now sorted and we can go on to the next thing which is the wipers which is simple um, but I actually want to see what the problem is with the wiper right so we put a new windscreen wiper on the van here's the old windscreen wiper and as you can see there's a tear in the wiper blade and that's the reason why it failed um, and the other one was covered in muck so what I've done is just clean it up with some cleaner and so uh, now that's given a good wash and wipe right okay so the last bit is the emissions the toughest bit right now with the emissions on diesels it tends to be that if the car or the van has been just sitting around doing nothing you take it for an MOT you tend to get a bit of a high reading and um, looking at the actual form the reading is uh, 1.50 now for this car it's supposed to be 1.5 or sorry 0 0.5 Zero 0.5 I think it is or 0 0.5 one or two so that's quite high that is in terms and that's the reason why that failed this stuff here wins uh, gold uh, formula gold it's a uh, basically it's a treatment system and it will improve the performance of the vehicle and uh, but also what it does is it cleans the system out so it's a really good way of uh, um, clean out some of the sludge in diesel engines so I've used this in the past before what you do is you put this in make sure you've got about half a tank of fuel in the vehicle and then give it a good run before you bring it to the MLT station and then that should hopefully bring the reasons back into more normal uh, or passable state so I've put this in the van already we're going to take it for a little run and then we're going to get the van MOT and then hopefully we'll pass so let's see how we go one hour later right so we just come back and we have a pass although I forgot to sort out the registration number plate we still passed it though because it's got two so as long as one works that's the main thing but we will replace that bowl but we got a pass now the emissions thing worked a treat like I said and let me show you the difference so that's what we failed on 1.4 1.50 that's what we've passed on 0.04 so it was literally 0.1 behind being um, without fairness one it's 0.05 is a manufacturer setting so we've just just passed it but that's the result so that means that we can crack on and don't have to worry about uh, this van for another year although it's coming up to a service so we will sort out some of those service items and I'm going to replace the um, bulb that's gone so next year hopefully we'll get a clean sheet but what I do recommend is that wind gold clean flush cleaner put it in your car every three months uh, your van and then it will um, take care of it but yeah we're gonna get that light sorted now right okay so since we're not doing the exhaust and the reason why I decided not to do the exhaust let me explain I didn't want to if it went wrong it will mean that the car will be out of action and since I've got the remap tu um, tune uh, booked in for the 15th I'd rather get that done and not have to cancel it because I'm now having to wait for an exhaust or a piece of exhaust or get it repaired unnecessarily I'd rather get that done and actually have a chat with the guys just to make sure that I'm going down the right route uh, once we get it mapped down to like I said causing a disruption so it will happen we'll just move it to uh, another date in the meantime since we've got some time to kill I figured I'm going to go and have a look at the TT the mark one and see if we can sort out the um, problem with the uneven running um, that's the main reason why the car has been in my garage for so long so let's see if we can get that sorted right so we're back on the TT and this rough running, I think it is the injectors. Um, but the only way to find out is to film it in action. So 
let's run this. Let's see, hopefully we'll figure out which injector it is that's uh, causing the problem. Right, according to that, only two injectors fired. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna swap around to see if it is the actual injectors or whether it is the power to the injectors. Right, so these two we've swapped. Now what should happen is that should not fire and that should fire. If this does fire, then that means that it's the injector. If this doesn't fire and this does, it's the wiring. Either way, we know that this one and this one weren't firing. So I'm not gonna do it now only because there's a lot of fuel, a lot of wet fuel, and I've just connected, disconnected, and I want to make sure the fuel evaporates first before we try again. So we'll come back and do it shortly. Two hours later. Right, so we've swapped these two around now, as you've seen. So if my theory is right, if it's the injectors, this one should not work, and this one will fire. If it's the wiring, then this one will continue to work and this one won't. So let's find out. And there you have it. So you probably saw what happened there. Uh, which one now? <laughs> I've forgotten. But essentially this one here fired, that one didn't. That's the one we swapped. So it's definitely injectors. So this injector and this injector need to be replaced. That's good news because now we can sort this engine out. Okay, so great result. Car is now, well, we know what the problem is. So we're gonna uh, replace those two injectors and then that, should, that car will be back on the road and we'll run and then we'll decide what we're going to do. Um, so if you recall, I spoke about perhaps fitting a 2.5 uh, liter engine in there but at the moment that doesn't seem very promising because of the amount of work that's involved and also the availability of these engines so next week we get back on the tools again but we'll be remapping the car and that's something that I've been waiting for for a long time and I know you're going to enjoy that uh, video so we're going to be at Regal Autosports and they're going to get that car tuned you're going to meet Ash who's a great guy and we're going to talk to him about that elephant in the room question which is best a remap or a bolt-on box like a race chip so we're going to have that discussion as well as do the actual remap on the gte so you're going to see it before and after reading and then we're going to see what the difference is so hopefully you'll join me for that next week 
And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe here if you are a casual viewer and click on that bell notification button so you know, uh, so you're notified whenever we release a new video. And don't forget, we've got our Amazon store and our t-shirt store if you want any merchandise or some of the tools that we use in the vlog. So I hope you have a good week and we will see you on the next one.